everyone, Maya here from My Little Learners, and I am back to share with you today a little bit about how I structure a daily routine during small pod teaching during COVID times. A few days ago, I shared about our outdoor classroom learning environment, how we learn outdoors, so check that out if you haven't seen it yet. That's also, again, why I am filming outside. I want it to be in our classroom environment so that it makes a bit more sense. So if you do hear some background noises, again, it is just nature sounds, nature magic in the background, okay? So just a mini recap, I am teaching two third graders and one second grader full-time homeschool, so I meet with them five days a week for five hours each day. Now, I had to decide, since I am doing full-time homeschool with them, I got to decide how I wanted to structure the whole day, how to work with third graders and second graders at the same time, and how to organize their schedule and fit in all the curriculum that they need to learn. I also tutor a small group of kids, other three kids, twice a week in the afternoons, but I'll get more into what I do with them in a different video. This video, I want to focus on how I set up the day, our schedule time, breakdowns and kind of a general overview of what the week looks like so that if any of you are homeschooling or small pod teaching or interested in how it works what COVID teaching looks like during these times you can get a general idea of how it goes with us. So I don't know about you, but I'm one of those people who plans for the whole week ahead. So I, on the weekends, I'll sit and I'll plan for the whole week, laying out what we'll do every day and what our themed activities for the week will be. So you'll see here, and I'm just going to, I'll show you close up in a bit, but I just want you to see, I do it on a Google Doc. So the pink is like the morning part, green, every time it changes colors on here, that's a different block of our day. So you'll notice that there are one, two, three, four, four main blocks of our day. Purple is just like what they can do at home, which is usually, I don't really give them homework. It's just like iReady if you any of you use that or like some online learning stuff they can do. Four sections of our day. So for our daily routine, I broke it up. They have a snack time where they can eat a snack. Then they have a separate time that's recess where they'll get to go and play. During snack time, it's just for eating. Recess, they can actually play. And then we have another break, a lunch and lunch recess combined. So during the lunch and lunch recess, they can eat and then they play and that one's combined. So over Overall, they have three breaks throughout their day and the four different blocks of our time are divided up between that. So the kids get here at 9.30 a.m. and they leave at 2.30 p.m. So a five hour day and I found out that that's a pretty good amount of time for them. By the end of the day, they're, they're ready to go home. In the beginning of our day, the first block goes from about 9.30 to 10.30 and what we've actually kind of started now is like they like to actually come and do like a few minutes of silent reading. Just they come over, they all get their book boxes out, they put them on the table behind me and then they get out a book and they read. And it's just a kind of quiet way to start our day. Then this block is always kind of our whole class ELA part of the day where I will either read aloud a story, a picture book usually, and then we'll do some kind of um, ELA activity with it. We've been working on summarizing. So the five W's, who, what, where, when, why, and then how. So we'll either do that and then a whole group activity. Maybe we'll do a whole group spelling and grammar lesson. That's where this, that would also go. Or we do like a research project. Like this week, we're actually doing this really cool timeline project with like comparing their lives and then inventions. And I'm not going to get too much into it. I'll share it more after the week is done but I will share with you um, for example this lesson plan weekly lesson plan I have behind me we were doing New Year's slash snow week slash winter week so for example in the morning time we read a book about hopes and dreams I think it was like Kobe Yamada's what do you do with a chance and then we wrote down our hopes and dreams in a paragraph and this is where I would do my guided writing with them so where I would help model sentences and paragraphs I'd sit and work with them and see how they're writing and then after that day it was pretty cute we made like these fancy drinks and we mixed like different sodas and juices so we could toast to the new year and they would read their hopes and dreams paragraph out loud and then toast each other and say happy new years so little activities like that we do in the morning time all right so then after that first block then they get their snack break and and during their snack break, they're allowed to go eat. Um, they don't have to stay at the table. They really like to go hang out with the um, chicken. If you remember last time I showed you where the chicken is, that area over there. They really like to hang out and eat over there, especially because it is winter time and a bit more chilly. So the sun actually shows up over there first in the morning. So we all like to go sit and eat snack in the sun. So they're allowed to be there during snack time, but they are not allowed to go on the playground and play. That is strictly for recess time. So snack time is only about 
10 minutes sometimes, depending. I always have to encourage them, please save some food for lunch because they really like to eat all their food at once. So we got to save food for lunch. So after snack, we come back, and then this is when we transition to our ELA centers where I actually get to work with the third graders and the second graders separate. So let me explain kind of how I made that work. So for our curriculum, I mentioned it a bit last time, but we are actually, the kids are still enrolled in their local district, but what we're doing is an independent study program so that we get all the curriculum from the school. So they're still using the same curriculum that they would use if they were going to their public school. And when they go back to public school, eventually they'll be familiar with the curriculum still. So we get all the curriculum. It's independent study though, so I do all the teaching of it with them. So our district uses benchmarks. I don't, you might be familiar with it, but what is kind of nice is that each grade level is on the same unit and this unit is the same theme. So we're on a technology theme and this is the unit that we're on for this week or these past few weeks, technology. So how I've worked it with the centers is that the second grader who is on his own because he's the only one is actually very independent luckily. So make centers work and then the two girls do their center together and Sometimes they're a little bit chatty, but it's worked out that they can also get their work done independently because they are a bit older. So what happens is I work usually with the second grader first, and from this block lasts from usually about 10.45 to around 11.45, so about half an hour with each group, the second grader and the two third graders. And with the second grader, I will do the benchmark reading, the annotating. We have a packet um, of spelling and vocabulary and grammar that we work on, and then there's always like a little essay prompt that goes with benchmarks, so we'll work on that too. And then any like close reading questions and stuff, we'll do all that together with me, one on one. So the second grader, it's one on one. With the third graders, it's two on one. Now, while I'm working with the second grader, the third graders have independent work and it's always the same so that they get that consistent routine and they know what they're supposed to be doing. It's always like a page in their packet, one of their spelling, grammar, or um, writing pages, cursive handwriting pages. It's always one page in their packet and then they go to journal and then they do silent read to self. Now, their journal is where they get to write whatever they want. So I don't monitor that. All I tell them is please write the date and then try to write in a proper paragraph format because what I've noticed is that they like to drift away from that red line and their writing ends up all crooked and sideways, which oh, I'm trying to get them to write straight. So the only guidelines they have is try to write to that red line, write a paragraph, Otherwise, it's all up to you what you want to write. That's your writing, your personal writing. I don't watch that one because, again, I do the directed writing in the morning or with me during ELA centers when they work with me. So they get journal and then they get time to read to self. Now, when they're in their independent work center, they actually get to sit wherever they want outdoors. And I told you. And the most popular places, of course, are they really love sitting on the trampoline back there, which is right behind this slide. Or they like to sit, again, right um, next to Pepper's pen. Again, that's where the sun is, too, during the that time and it's really cute to watch them work in like such a flexible seating arrangement but if they're working with me we usually work on the table unless it's like a pretty chilly day then actually sometimes um, we'll work like on those two benches right there these little benches in front of the fire pit because again that's where the Sun is and then we'll just sit in the Sun and work on our ELA then after about half an hour we switch and then the second grader has the same set of activities so then again third graders come work with me we do our benchmark packet or workbook and then after that, we all clean up that because ELA is done and then they head to recess. And recess time, they get about 15, 20 minutes depending on how we did in the morning time. And that's when they're allowed to go on the playground. They make up so many imaginary games. It's super fun. Now for math, our school uses the Go Math curriculum, which isn't my favorite, but it does... It, gets through the concepts and I follow along with the concepts of fit in like other different math games and activities which I will share with you in another video some of my favorite math games third graders are doing multiplication and division right now and the thing is since we're doing independent study to be held accountable we have to turn in certain work so we have to turn in the gray pages in the go math book and we have to turn in these benchmark packets and writings um, every few weeks so if those weren't a requirement, I probably wouldn't do so much of these Go Math pages and do some other math, but to be held accountable and to meet the criteria to stick with independent study, we do have to do it and turn it in. So how I break up math. 
Now, recess usually takes us until 12 o'clock, so I get an hour block from math time. And I do centers also, and it sometimes I switch it up, though, where sometimes I'll work with each kid individually, which I do like to do at least three times a week. And then sometimes, though, I'll work with the third graders together and the second graders separate. Just because the third graders are learning the same thing, and if they're kind of in the same a level of understanding, I'll work with them both, but I also like to work with them separate just to really see how their understanding is going. So how it works is that if I'm doing one person at a time, that the one person will come work with me and they sit at the table, we sit at the table, and then the other two have a math game to play. And again, I'll share with you a whole bunch of my favorite math games, but they'll play, usually they'll play again over here, just like on the ground or like on the thing by Pepper, the chicken. And they'll play a game, and then I'll just have them rotate. I do about 15 minutes with each one, because then there's like transition period. They'll rotate, then the next two will get to work together. Um, so the third and the second grader will have times together in the same rotation working with each other during while I'm working with the other third grader. And usually they'll play like either a math game. They like to do like whiteboard problems on the whiteboard or the second grader does understand multiplication so sometimes they can play a multiplication game. Then I switch, I work with the second grader and then the two third graders usually play, I want them to be playing division math multiplication games together right now. And then we switch again and usually that last rotation um, is the two siblings, the second and the third grader and sometimes they like to play with each other but sometimes I have them play math games on the computer or do iReady math and practice that so they have some time separate because I know they get a lot of together time at home and at school all day long. So if you have any questions about that, let me know down below. Aftermath is lunchtime. They get about half an hour to 45 minutes, again, depending on how our morning part of the day went. I usually try to end lunch around 1.30 so that we have one more hour left for our afternoon activities. But during lunchtime, they all bring their own lunch from home. And again, we all sit over here. I eat lunch with them. They're super cute. We chat. And then once they finish all their food, I do try to have them finish their food. Then they get to go play for the rest of the time, lunch recess. Now, the last hour of the day is my favorite part of the day because that's where we do like our themed activities, kind of I call it like their interest times. And uh, some examples of what we've done is that they actually all started coming to me. I officially started working with all three in a small pod early November. So the first week they were with me, we did this whole like Diwali themed week and then we did a Thanksgiving Day week and then we did, you know, holidays around the world, Hanukkah, Kwanzaa week. We did a snow week and what we do is that I pick a theme and then I pick different learning activities or like hands-on craft activities for us to do every day of that week. So for example, winter snow week I was telling you about, first one of the days we did an ice experiment. We read this really cute book, Ice Boy, and it's really cute. It goes into the water cycle through a little ice cube and we talked about the water cycle and then we did this experiment with melting ice where we uh, took the ice out we decided like different things to put on it to see what would make it melt faster and wrote down our observations and hypothesis and all that stuff then the rest of the week we did like fake snow experiments comparing and contrasting like different recipes for snow they love cooking and any kind of a hands-on thing and so we tried three different recipes we tried just baking soda and a little bit bit of vinegar if you don't put too much vinegar because then it'll explode but if you put just a little then it turns into like this snowy consistency we tried it with like baking soda vinegar and paper towels and then we tried like a fake instant snow that I bought from Amazon and so um if you're interested in those I'll link the blog that I got the ideas from down below and that fake snow from Amazon but that one was super fun and on Friday we always do like a big celebration of our learning usually it goes along with our theme and Friday is our baking cooking day where the kids love baking and I love that working in this small pot environment or like home school teaching I'm allowed to incorporate more baking and cooking with them so this week since it was snow themed we made homemade ice cream which was super fun I don't know if you've done it but it's the one where you put like the heavy cream in the bag and the salt and the ice and you shake it and then it eventually turns into ice cream and it was so good it was my first time doing it and it was delicious it actually tastes like real ice cream I was very surprised and pleased so um, if you're interested in that there's a recipe linked down below as well so that was super fun and then we did a snow day where we made our last piece of snow we looked over our charts compared everything and um, they got to take their snow home Fridays is also when I let them bring a toy and they love that they get to bring like a stuffy 
And the rule is, you know, when we're learning, the stuffy just can't bother your learning. So the stuffy usually sits like on a the bench or a swing near us. They usually like to sit on that like swinging bench over there on the side. And then um, the stuffy has to stay over there. And then during snack time and recess is when they're able to play with them and take them out. And then at the end of our day for our Friday celebration of whatever we're doing, then they also get to take um, them out and they join in the celebration with us. So that is really fun. And then that's how our day goes. So we end with some hands-on activity or some learning. This week, I'll give you a little sneak peek. We're doing a tea-themed week because it's actually a very cold week this week. It looks nice out right now, but it's actually pretty cold and it rained all day Monday. It's supposed to storm again on Friday. So our celebration will be like this little tea party on Friday and I'll give you more details on that, our little timeline tea week lesson plans at the end of the week once we get through them all. So here's just like a closer up of what our schedule looks like. And um, we see this was snow week, so January 11th. What are some of the activities we did? They're again broken up into colors. I break up like what the third graders are doing here is at the top and then what the second grader is going to work on underneath for ELA, for math, what third grade is doing, then what second grade does, and then um, what our special interest uh, themed interest thing that we're doing for the week is, is down here. And then if I ever like find any things that like directions or something, I, what I do is I link it so that I can just click it and get taken to the page with all the instructions and stuff. So this is what I plan on on the weekends. I write all of this out. And then for the parents, what I do throughout the week, I always take pictures of the kids. So I'll send the parents like the pictures and then just like a general overview of what each grade level was working on and our general theme of the week and what we did. I also, what I do just to like help myself out too is that I have this binder and I actually write out, you'll see here what we do every day, what we get to and what we don't. Cause sometimes you know we don't get to everything. And then this is also helpful because sometimes I just like photocopy or scan this schedule and then I just give the parents a copy so they can actually see like exactly what lessons and things we covered. So if you'll see this week, I did Monday, Tuesday. I stopped to fill in. Today is Wednesday, actually, when I'm filming this. And then this was the week before. I have a whole binder. And then this is also a nice way. I could just go on my computer and, like, take a look at what we did before. But this is just a nice way to, like, flip through and see, like, all the different things we've done each week. And, again, it's just divided up, like, how the Google document is divided up. I did the four different sections of our day and then write down what we do each day um, during that time. All right, my friends, so I know that was a lot, but I did just want to take you through our day so you know like how it's structured, how I decided to structure it. If any of you are having to do homeschool right now and are like struggling to find a good routine, maybe that helps out. Or if maybe you're interested in homeschooling or maybe you want to do small pod teaching, then this is an idea of how you can set it up. So if you have any questions about what I shared today or even any other questions about any of this small pod teaching or teaching related things, please let me know in the comments and I'll be sure to either answer you or make a whole video about it too. I'd also love to hear any suggestions or recommendations from you, so please do reach out. All my social media links can also be found down below. I don't know if you, I mentioned it last time, but I am also the creator of my storybook, Children's Book Review Blog and Interactive Read Aloud YouTube channel, and if you're curious about that, you can check them out down below. But there, you'll find where you can reach me, email, and everything. And, well, my friends, thank you for joining along with this little teaching video. Hope it was helpful, but until next time, Happy learning.